Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. So last week Lauren emailed me and requested a paper cutout tutorial. So this week I wanted to deliver and with winter well on its way, I thought winter would be a great theme with something that is cut out from paper being paper snowflakes. So this week we're gonna create exactly what you see on screen. So this is the final outcome of this video and we're just gonna jump right in and I'll fill you in as we go along. We're gonna be using some paper textures and these snowflakes that you see over here are free. This one was created specifically for this tutorial and the lettering was as well. So we're going to create a new document by going file new and our document's going to be 4,000 pixels wide by 3,000 pixels high and I'm just going to keep it at 300 for our resolution so you can see it really nicely um, on screen and color mode we're going to leave it at RGB and I'm just going to hit OK and the next thing we're going to do is double click on this background layer hit OK and now we can edit this so we're going to double click one more time and we're going to apply a layer style of a pattern overlay. Now I'm using some recycled paper textures. I have two kits. I've got a handmade paper texture kit and a recycled paper texture kit. So I'm using paper textures from those kits. I will link to them on the video and in the video description. But I also gave three of these away over on my blog. So I'll link to that as well if you want to kind of test it out before you go in um, using maybe the more detailed textures. So for this background, I'm going to use this. Um, it's called Earth and I'm just going to click on it and we want to use it exactly how it looks right now. So I'm just going to hit OK. And in order to get this kind of blue background going right here, I'll show you how to easily change the the texture to any color that you want. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a layer right above it. And don't forget to label your layers because we're using kind of um, more than we usually do for this tutorial. So I'm just going to call this background and this new layer is going to be background color. And I'm going to use this blue color right here and the RGB value for this blue is 97, 144, 152. And just make sure you send this to the back um, and then you can use the keyboard shortcut command delete or control backspace if you're on a PC. And this is what will happen. And the way that you colorize your texture is all you have to do is come over here to your blend mode, toggle it down and choose color and now it's blue. So pretty easy. Now we're going to bring in our big snowflake and then we'll add in everything else afterwards. So I'm going to hop over to Illustrator and grab my big snowflake. These are the other snowflakes that we're using. These were totally free over on the blog. Um, but in addition to these, these are the three that we're going to be using for this tutorial. I also did some hand lettering and I vectorized it out. Um, if you're unfamiliar with vectorizing typography, I'll link to another tutorial I have on how I do that. Uh, and I also created this more detailed snowflake uh, just so you can kind of get that handmade feel of the cutout effect that we're going for. So I'm just going to copy this first, command C or control C on a PC, and I'm going to paste it into Photoshop. Command V or Control V on a PC. And I'm going to paste it in as a smart object and hit OK. So now um, this is a pretty good size, but I don't want the very tops touching either end. So I'm just going to reduce it down a bit. So I'm holding Shift and Alt at the same time. And then I'm clicking a corner node and kind of scaling it down. I don't want it too small. I just don't want the edges touching the edges. And then just hit Enter when you're happy. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is apply a layer style to this to get that kind of nice white paper texture going on. So I'm going to double click on that. First, I'm going to label this detailed big snowflake. Double click on that layer and then come over to pattern overlay. And this texture is from the handmade paper textures kit. And I'm going to, it's called concrete. So I'm just going to click on that and I want to use it exactly how it is. So I'm not going to do anything else, but now I want to add that nice drop shadow that gives the really good um, paper cutout effect. So click on drop shadow and I'm going to change this to a darker color just so it stands out a lot more from the background since we've got some kind of light colors going on. This adds a lot of really nice contrast. So I'm going to add this kind of dark, almost totally black color. Hit OK. My opacity I'm going to change to 65%. I'm going to keep the default uh, global light angle for the drop shadow, but on distance I'm going to increase that to 11 and on size I'm going to increase that to 18. And actually that's looking a little too dark. Let's bring this down to 60, maybe 55. 
that looks good. Okay, so that's all we're doing with this big snowflake. Now we're gonna start integrating all that detail in the center of it. So I'm gonna hop back over into Illustrator and the first thing I'm gonna do is grab my type. So I'm just gonna Command C or Control C on a PC to copy it, bring it into Photoshop, Command V or Control V to paste. And now is when I'm going to scale it down, rotate it, kind of arrange it how I want it to be. And just to share my thought process here, I really want this um, crossbar of the T to come outside of this main area that I've darkened uh, to set the type in so you can see it better. And maybe I want this tail of the art to come close but not touch. I don't want my W touching all the way over here. So it's kind of uh, the time to play around with things a little bit and get them where you want them. So I don't want to cut into this kind of um, line right here coming off that doodled line. So that's looking pretty good to me. So once you're happy, just hit enter. And then we're going to bring in our other snowflakes that we want to use. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to bring them in one at, one at a time, just copying and pasting. Okay, so now that we're happy with our positioning of all of our interior elements, we're gonna select each one. So when you're over here in your layers palette, if you hold command or control on a PC, you can see my little hand changes with the icon, and then I'm just gonna click once. So this selects one item, but if I wanna make additional selections, I need to hold shift. So now I'm holding command or control if you're on a PC, in addition to holding shift. So I have both of those buttons pressed on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna click this next layer, which grabs this other snowflake at the same time. I'm gonna do it to this next layer to grab my other snowflake, and then I'm gonna do it on this last layer, just clicking, and that'll select my topography. The next, now I'm gonna release both the shift or the command or control keys on your keyboard, come down to this detailed big snowflake layer, and the next thing you're gonna do is use the keyboard shortcut, command, shift, and the letter I or if you're on a PC, control shift in the letter I. And this will invert the selection. So before we were just selecting the snowflakes and the type, and now we're selecting everything but the snowflakes and the type. So now when we create a mask, which is this little icon down here, I'm gonna click it once. Now when we do that and we turn off all of these layers, it subtracts those from that selection. So now we've got the base of our final piece. And with any type of paper cutout, you need to consider floating pieces. These would not exist if this were a real piece, so now we have to get rid of these. So this is kind of the cleanup part of it, where you have to kind of think logically what would in real life appear and what would be excluded from your design. So we're gonna keep the mask on and in order to add or subtract from your mask you're going to hit B to activate your brush tool and then over here you have to remember whenever you're using a mask white reveals and black conceals so I want to conceal these elements so I need to make sure I'm painting in black so I'm going to just switch these around so I've got black in my foreground and now when I brush I'm concealing these areas and if you don't like um, See if I come in here really close, this is a little jaggedy. Sometimes I'll go into my uh, lasso tool, my polygonal lasso, which is right here. If you don't have it selected, it's this middle one right here, so just click and toggle down. And if I click, I can kind of straighten out that messy area. And then I'm, I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut, so I need to make sure black is sent to the back. And that keyboard shortcut, shortcut is Command Delete or Control Backspace on a PC. And then I wanna make sure when I go back to my brush, I'm gonna deselect by hitting Command D or Control D on a PC. I wanna go back to having black in my foreground. So I'm just gonna to toggle this forward, hit B on my keyboard, and now I've got my brush tool again. So I'm just gonna come around, and obviously these little elements right here are floating, so we wouldn't have these in real life. So we're just gonna get rid of them. You can see their shadows disappear as I get rid of them as well. Make sure that you're using a hard brush because it'll look more like cut paper. If you have a soft brush, it, you're gonna add an effect to paper that doesn't even exist in real life. So in order to make sure you have a hard brush, just toggle this brush um, down and just make sure your hardness right here is set to 100% and that'll let you know that you're using an entirely hard brush. So 
So there's one last thing, and that's this piece right here would not exist, but if I get rid of it, then you're not gonna tell that there's an E right here. So my solution to this is just adding this part back in. So you can still read the T and you'll be able to tell that there's an E right here. So I'm gonna make sure I have white in my foreground because I wanna reveal this part right here. So I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard and I've got white in my front and I'm just gonna brush this in. And now when I zoom out, you can read everything and it totally makes sense in real life. So the last thing we're gonna do is just add some snowflakes around it for to add to our composition. So I'm gonna turn these snowflakes on that we had before, but now I'm gonna reposition them. So this one we're gonna bring up here and you can rescale them at this same time if you'd like. So Command T or Control T on a PC and you can scale them however you'd like see make this one a little smaller and maybe make this one a little bigger okay so now we want to add the same uh, drop shadow and paper texture that we're using for this big one to these smaller snowflakes so I'm just gonna come over here and right click on this FX icon and choose copy layer style and now I'm gonna click on this bottom snowflake I'm gonna hold shift and select the top snowflake so I've got all these selected right click paste layer style and that'll paste that layer style onto the rest of the snowflakes. So that's how you create a paper cutout effect in Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog every hyphen Tuesday.com for those freebies that I mentioned and a bunch of other design tutorials. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.